Welcome back to the Mock Miller YouTube channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking our journey through the world of pressurized fermentation one step further. So James, in the last video, we talked about the Fermenter King Junior range from Keg King. What have we got on the table now? Well, Martin, those um, Keg King Fermenter King Juniors are a really great, affordable and accessible way to get into pressurized fermentation. And actually today, what we've got here in front of us is basically the next level up. So what is that next level up, James? Well, Mark, we have here in front of us today another range of pressurized fermenters from Keg King and they are the Apollos. So what's the difference between the Keg King Juniors and the Apollo range? Well, first and foremost, you can see size. You know, in this arena, we are talking about capacity first and foremost. Now, before we go too far into the big differences or the advantages within this range, let's just touch on the three models that we have here, okay? Okay. So we have three Apollo pressurized fermenters, however, the two closest to you, so the one this side and the tall one in front of us, they're classed as uni tanks. Right. So they actually offer more functionality, which we'll come on to. And then the one here is what's called a snub-nosed fermenter. So, okay, can you just talk me through what is similar or the same across all three units, really? Yeah, absolutely. So they're all constructed out of the same high-grade um, PET plastic that the other fermenters in the range are, are using. Um, they're all rated to 35 PSI, so they will maintain that same level of pressure that uh, the others that we've previously done content about will hold. They all share the same sort of design on the lid. So you've got the keg posts for both product out and gas in. You have PRVs on all three, and you also have what's called a dry hot port. So where the PRV screws into, you can unscrew it and actually put your dry hops in so you don't have to take the whole lid assembly off, okay? The other thing that they all share is a deep thermo well, which goes through the middle on all three. Now you'll see a difference on these ones, which I'll come into in a minute, but that means you can put a, um, a thermo well right down into the product and get an accurate temperature reading from inside the fermenter. Okay, so if you've got an ink bird, you can feed that down there and then you could have a heat belt on or something like that. Yeah, there's there's options for cooling and heating, absolutely. But first and foremost, you, you can take an accurate temperature reading, okay? Okay, so what are the capacities of these three units? Right, so we've got two different capacities across the three units. The two at the front, they're 30 litre in total capacity. And then the one at the back here is 60 litre. So you could easily brew a single batch of beer, you know, 40 pints, that kind of capacity across these. And then the back one here, because it's 60 litre, you could probably get double that out of this, okay? okay. Um, so you'd probably be looking at about 50 litres of beer in this uh, once it's finished. Now, let's take a closer look at actually what the difference is across the units. But to do that, let's make a little bit of space and we're going to take the 60 litre off of the table so I can see your lovely face. <laughs> okay. Okay, James. So tell me what are the differences between these two? Absolutely, right. So like we said, the differences between these two extend to the snub nose and the two uni tanks because they are the same other than capacity. But the difference between these two in design really comes down to the bottom end of the fermenter. Now, on the snub nose fermenter, you'll see that we've just got a clear cap at the bottom, okay? Okay. Now there's no way of accessing what's going on inside here. Now, what that means is you don't have a bottom assembly, which makes the unit a bit shorter, which does also mean that when the base is turned in this way, yeah. you'll be able to put them together, and in a lot of circumstances, you'll be able to get that into a fermentation chamber of some sort, like a firm fridge. However, what you get on the Unitank option is um, the ability to actually harvest yeast from the bottom of your fermenter. So throughout fermentation, you get the sediment, the trub, the yeast, some hops, all that kind of stuff settled towards the bottom. Now, these are all designed with a, a really nice conical cone on the bottom, which helps to gather all of that matter um, and limit the amount that it's in contact with your beer. However, on the Unitank versions, you have this collection vessel on the bottom, which you can see there, 
which means that a lot of that matter will settle into here. And then using the central uh, thermal well, which doubles up as a seal, you can seal off what's going on at the bottom by pressing down on that plunger and then unscrewing the, um, the collection vessel at the bottom, okay? Which means, like I said, you can harvest yeast, you can remove trub, you know, you can end up with a clearer beer to either serve directly from these, because they've all got the ability to be served from directly, or to then transfer into another serving vessel, such as a corny keg. Okay, so you could actually reuse that yeast on a next batch. Absolutely. So you mentioned the ability to serve from this. Can you explain a little bit more about how that works with yeah. this vessel? If you've watched the previous video where we um, talked about the, the small 10, 20 and 30 litre um, pressurised fermenters, the Keg King Juniors, um, actually these deploy a very similar um, setup. So you have your product post is attached to a floating dip tube, so a piece of hose that then goes to a float ball. And actually on these, they've got a really nice mesh filter as well, which means that they float at the top. So if you're serving from them, because you can put pressure in, right? Um, or you can use the pressure that's naturally occurred through fermentation, you can then serve products out that's clear from the very top, okay? Whereas on a corny keg, you have a dip tube that's solid, a rigid dip tube that goes all the way to the bottom of the keg. So that's why it's important to have clear finished beer into your corny kegs. Um, whereas this, you don't necessarily need to worry about that as much. And certainly with the ones that um, give you the option to be able to remove yeast and shrub, you're gonna even further um, clear that beer down and make it you know, suitable for serving. Right, so that kind of does the job of a keg or even the ironically named pressure barrels, which <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, hold pressure. don't hold pressure. Yes, yeah. Um, they are a really good modern take on that same kind of uh, concept that the pressure barrel was designed for. However, this actually works. You know, they hold pressure and you can serve from them and you can carbonate in them. So they're an awesome all round piece of kit. So James, you said that the PRV also doubles up as a dry hop port. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit more about that and a little bit about PRV for those who might not know. Yeah, so PRV stands for pressure relief valve and it is a safety measure. So any pressurized vessel in the kind of drinks industry or actually any industry really has a PRV because that vessel is only rated to have a certain amount of pressure held within. Now, what the PRV will do is it will lift, it will blow when it reaches a certain point. Now, um, these ship with three different PRVs and each of them is rated to slightly different levels. Uh, what it means is that actually, if you want to, when you're fermenting under pressure inside, you can put the PRV you want in there. So like there's a 10 PSI one and a 15 PSI one. You can put those in and it will blow when it hits that point, okay? Yeah. Um, now, that's really good and useful. It does mean that just out of the box, you can use these, um, but you can also add another item which gives you even more control and less reliance on the PRV. The PRV then just becomes like a safety measure redundancy, um, whereas what we're going to talk about in a minute actually acts as your ability to measure and dial in your pressure. Okay? So that would be the spundy like we showed in the last video. Absolutely, that is the spundy, you're right. We just want to talk about the dry hot port. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's like a two piece setup on these. So imagine you've got beer in there fermenting. Well, you've hit the end of fermentation, you want to add some dry hops. What you can do is blow the PRV, okay? Yeah. So lift the PRV to dump all of the pressure out. Now you've still got CO2 in there. It's not drawing oxygen back in, but you've emptied the pressure. Then you can just unscrew the whole assembly and you've then got a fairly wide port that you could use a sanitized funnel and then put your dry hops in through. Oh, that's, a, that's a real good feature because I can't imagine having to take out the whole lid with the pipe and the float and the dip tube yep. and trying to keep that sanitary while I'm adding hops. Exactly, right. Whereas this makes it super simple, really straightforward. And then it just screws back in. And if you want, you can then add some more gas via the gas post, purge again, you know, by blipping the um, PRV just to empty any air that may have got in there. Because remember, CO2 is heavier, it's going to be sat at the bottom. So any oxygen should be at the top. Yeah, it's going to be minimal though, if yep. anything gets in there. And like you say, the CO2 is given a blanket. So you are then just going to add a little pressure to push that slightly out. Absolutely. Fine. Okay, so there's a dip tube going from 
the liquid post, and I can tell that's the liquid because the gas one has the notches on. Yep. But that's not the only thing on the end of there. The, there's a filter. Yeah, there is. There's a mesh filter on these, which you don't get on the um, the smaller ones. You could add one if you wanted to. Now that ultimately just helps when you're serving or transferring. And what it will do is it will filter out larger particulates of either yeast or hops. Um, so that you end up, again, with a clearer clearer pint or a clearer beer being transferred into another vessel. So, James, how easy are these to put together and disassemble for cleaning? They're an absolute doddle, but rather than just talk about it, I'm actually going to take this one apart and get you to put it back together. By the power of video editing, Martin, I've disassembled the 30-litre Apollo Uni tank, all in the name of you now having the opportunity to learn how to put it together. All right? OK. Looks fairly simple. It's like a... Yeah, jigsaw or Lego set. So yeah, yeah, I'm right on your street. Yeah. Um, what we're going to do first though, is we're going to work on the bottom of the fermenter. So we're going to fit the couplings that allow us to put our collection bottle on. Okay. Yep. So you need to grab the internal adapter. It's the one there with the big silicon O-ring on it. Yeah. Like the flangey thing. Yep. Um, okay. that, drop that inside okay. of the fermenter. Make sure it's yeah poking through the hole. Now. Actually, Keg King instructs you to turn it over at this point and um, fit the the screw, but we're not going to do that, okay? Because yeah. it's uh, actually can be a little bit tricky to get the the, the threads to meet. Okay. Um, doing it that way because you need to have a little bit of pressure on this internal part so that they really come through. So we're going to use a secret weapon, which is the uh, thermal well and plunger. So you need to put that inside. That's got an O-ring on there. It has, yeah, it's yep. got an O-ring on it. Put it on the inside. And that's going to give me an even pressure. Yep, press down on that. And I'm guessing that's what I've got to fit on, which yes. has got the teeth on it, and that's going to go on the inside. Exactly, yeah. So I get an even pressure down. So that you can get a nice thread. You're not going to cross-thread it. Oh, that, was, that was a doddle. <laughs> yep. Right. Okay. So we know now that we've got a good seal in there and we will come on to checking all the seals and making sure we're pressure tight before we put any beer into this. Can I just say, because I've just noticed something, there's um, like a white marbling and like cloudiness as you get to the bottom. Yeah. That's just the way these things are manufactured. Absolutely. The flow marks the plastic. Yeah. It's not a fault with the products. Okay. So next we need to focus on um, fitting all of the coupling so that we can fit our collection bottle. So turn the fermenter over. Da, da, da. And you're going to want, there's a couple of different adapters there, yeah. So you're going to want the one in your right hand. And an O-ring, so I'm guessing that's got to go into yep. there. O-ring goes into the top there. Yeah. And then you're going to want the coupling that's in your right hand, because if you look at that coupling... Yeah, that's threaded, so yep. that will allow for a bottle to thread into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've spotted something, haven't you? Yeah, that's a TC fitting. It is. So they also ship with the option to then fit tri-clamp... Um, adaptations to the bottom of the fermenter. So if you wanted to, you could really go to town with putting elbows and collection vessels and the ability to have like gas purging, all this kind of stuff through the wonder and full kind of suite of adaptations that you get when you have a tri-clamp port. So you can really get into the world of Unitank, which is pimp my Unitank. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's loads of things you could fit on there. Okay, awesome. Right, well, let's get this on. And all of this I'm just doing finger tight, no tools. Absolutely. It's plastic. We don't yep. want to crush it. We don't, and we also want to be able to take it apart to clean it. Yeah. So you'll now notice there's another O-ring in there. You just need to make sure that's in place. Yep. And then you can take the lid off of your collection bottle and screw that into place as well. Sweet. So we are now at the bottom end, set up, ready to go and do our pressure test. Now we need to focus on the top. So the top is very similar to the, the other ones that we put together, the Keg King Juniors. Yep. So um, you're going to want the lid, the, lid, the seal, uh, and you're going to need some other bits and pieces which I'm going to pass to you. Let's do the posts, I think, first. Yep. So you're going to want the two dip tubes. Yep. Those have got little O-rings on, so yep. those are going in like that. And the O-rings, make sure they're in between the bulkhead and the top of the post so sure. that it's pressing down. Then you're going to need your post. Post, pop it, and spring. Yeah. So that spring is... It's like a wider, triangular spring. Wider at the bottom and thinner at the top. Yeah. So that's going to go with the O-ring at the top of the pop it. Right, that's my liquid one, so I'm going to put that one there. 
And again, I'm just taking it easy on threading this because I don't want to cross thread it, yeah. damage the lid. And especially we're, we're talking metal on plastic yeah, at this it'll, point. Yeah, it'll easily cut its own thread and destroy the lid. Yeah, and there we go. And we know that that's our gas post because it's got the grooves on it now. Yeah, little notches on yeah. it. And then what we need to move on to is the final piece of um, assembly that we're going to do so far for this, which is putting in the uh, bung for our dry hot port. Okay, that's and, got an O-ring on there yeah, as well. Yeah, that's got an O-ring as well, and that just screws into place. Okay, finger tight. And then finally, we need to choose our PRV of choice, and we're going to go with the purple one. There we go. Um, so that is, again, just like the keg, you've got like a little poppet with an O-ring, and the spring will obviously change and change the amount of pressure that yeah, so it's release. Springs different tension, and like you said, that's what allows the different pressure to release. We screw that into place. All right, done. And we are pretty much assembled up there. The last thing we need to do is put our silicon dip tube on. Okay. Now these can be a bit fiddly. So I want it on the liquid one, that's the one without the notches. Yeah. Um, a little bit of spray of star sand, if you're really struggling, would help to kind of lube this and get it on. And then, you know, you want to make sure it's sanitary as well. So that's on. Okay. Now we need to come to the other end. But before we go too far on that other end, it's important to talk about this. So we have two parts to this. Like I said, we've got the floating ball. Now that's what keeps everything buoyant and means that we're drawing liquid from the top. And as I said, this is our mesh filter basket which is gonna keep large particles out of our beer, hops, yeast, that kind of stuff, all right? So you've linked these two together onto the wrong ring, and then I'm just gonna pop that onto the filter. All right, there we go. Done. Now, before you think about putting this all in, we've got one last bit that needs to be put together, and it is our plunger and thermal well. So this is a single unit that's hollow, down the tube, which is going to give us the ability to put a thermometer in because this is going to be protruding from the top. Okay. And then there's a plunger with a seal at the bottom, which is what's used to cap off the collection vessel when we're going to be drawing off any liquid, okay. um, any trub, that kind of stuff. And so used... you, the O-ring was that on there or have you fixed no, that on I there? No, I put that me? on there for you because I like helping you out. And what's the other things there? There's a little metal keeper plate, which again I've put on for you because right. it can be a bit fiddly. Now, what you need to do is, before you feed it through the lid, yep, pro tip. So that that stays in one place, isn't it? Just rattling around inside the fermenter. Yep. Now, before this goes in, Martin, I haven't done all the seals for you. There is one more, which is the big red seal that goes around the lid. Okay, so that kind of goes under the lip. Might have probably been easier if I'd put that on earlier, but I have time you can put it on, so that's cool. I'm going to hold those up and then that's going to go in there, yeah? Yep, absolutely, you got it. Drop all of your, your components inside. Don't worry too much about aligning things right yet because we now need to tighten up the lid. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about tightening this up fully just yet because we've got one last thing to fit to the thermal well and it's the little handle. So there you go, there's a tiny little grub screw on there. Okay, so we need to just kind of wind that out back a bit. Yeah, only a little bit. Okay. And then there is a, a hole to align it with on the, on the top there. Now what we can do is move on to pressure testing. It's always important that before we jump into doing any uh, live fermentation in anything like this, we pressure test for leaks, okay? Now what we can do is fill it with some sanitizer or yeah. some water or anything, add pressure to it, via a gas canister and just check what's going on, all right? So uh, let's go and get a gas canister. Right, so we're moving on to now uh, setting this up for a pressure check. Now, one thing that's really important when we're doing this is to add a little bit of uh, liquid. We're using some sanitizer. We're putting about four liters in. Um, we just want to test everything and actually having it relatively live with liquid in there really helps. Um, and also the benefit of it is that at the end, we're going to have a sanitized fermenter that if we wanted to, we could go on and make some beer and put into. Right, now we put that liquid in through the dry hopping port. How did you find that? Nice and easy. Yeah. You know, it's like, means I didn't have to mess around with having to put the lid back in and everything now inside of there can be nice and sanitised. Yep. And now, you, know, you know, the other thing is we've got the post down, so I can actually now, I can see how that works. I can fill the bottle. 
Now we've got our uh, sanitizing fluid inside the fermenter, we're going to do our pressure test and we do that with CO2 just like we would if we were pressurizing anything else. Cool. So there you go, goes on the gas post. Now we're going to turn the, um, the, make sure the gas box is turned off before we connect it and that the regulator is backed off so that we're not yeah. going to just dump loads of pressure in straight away. So we're going to go on and then we're going to just dial in the uh, pressure and seems to be holding absolutely does doesn't it now you might hear the plastic creak a little bit and all that kind of stuff but it's completely normal um, it's just as that plastic stretching and settling down so we'll just pop the pressure up a little bit more we can close that off take our gas post off and you know really you'd be able to hear if there was gas coming out um you might notice that there's a hiss or that kind of stuff if you really wanted to you could mix up some soapy water and just spray it around different seals to see that every you know make sure that everything is uh, is sealed up nice and tight so there we go we've done our pressure test we're happy that our fermenter's holding pressure feels nice and firm so what we can do now is uh start thinking about putting some beer in it at some point now martin talking about when we've got beer in here we've obviously talked about the fact that you can unscrew the collection bottle at the bottom you can seal it off using the plunger um i think we should give that a go don't you yeah i'm game let's uh so the plunger's down there's still pressure in it yep there's a bottle full of liquid yeah we're going to get some on the table i'm guessing because we always do clockwise to take it off yep okay so the space is limited under the frame so i think you're gonna have to lift it with the handles okay so then you have a sanitized lid pop that on yeast for another day yeast for another day now there's going to be a few drips because it's going to be wet in there but don't lift that up don't lift that up we are not losing pressure right and that's the really important thing we're not losing pressure that plunger as simple as that setup might seem is doing the job that we need it to do and it's maintaining pressure inside the fermenter and we know that because we can release the pressure relief valve and there's gas coming out and there's no gas leaking or gushing or dripping down here now okay. like i said there is going to be a bit of dripping whenever you take something like that off it's important to just monitor it and keep an eye on it and make sure that it's not leaking. But we can see now that it's completely stopped dripping and that it's completely sealed. You said there's something I shouldn't do. Yeah. You say I can't do something. I want to do it. Yeah, what was it I said that you shouldn't do? Don't lift Don't that up. Don't lift that up. Shouldn't put, lift the plunger. No, you and shouldn't. And I guess you shouldn't push your finger up there neither. No, you shouldn't. What you do, Martin, come on, this is gonna get messy. Oh, I, I don't wanna get wet. I don't know whether the frame's gonna fully fit. Oh, okay, right, go on then. Oh, it's really hard to lift because of the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's why you said not to do it. Yes, absolutely. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. That was exactly what I expected was going to happen. Uh, Sorry, James, I should pay. There's more a mop for you for a bit more for... attention to when you say don't do something <laughs> for cleaning up. Um, well, as ever, we've done something silly to showcase why you shouldn't do it. Uh, hopefully that's um, helped you know to not pull the plunger up if you've got one of these when there's liquid in it and pressure. That's what we're here for, answering the questions that need to be answered. <laughs> why don't I listen to James? Jesus. Folks, that's our overview for you of the Apollo series of fermenters from Keg King. Uh, we know that there's loads of you out there that have got questions about pressurized fermentation, benefits, how-tos, all that kind of stuff. So we're really focused at the moment on trying to help you get to grips with this really, really interesting part of home brewing. Um, and also getting wet along the way. Thanks, Martin. Yes, you're welcome. It's not over yet, though, because I've got something else lined up, and hopefully you'll be able to keep us dry for this next uh, video that's going to be coming along in the series, Martin. As we did with the, uh, the, the smaller versions, we're going to do a brew, and we're going to put it in this. Now that you've very kindly cleaned it, sanitized it, and 
purged it of everything. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed so you catch up on next week's video. Ring the bell for notifications. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, where James does dancing. I don't dance on there.